again. So now it is my great privilege to be able to introduce to you uh, Mr. Terry Lemerand. He is a retailer, an author, an educator, an entrepreneur, and one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. He's worked for over 40 years in the natural product industry, at which he has researched and developed over 400 formulations, nutritional formulations, botanical blends that continue to be top-selling products in the market today. His personal website that's dedicated to natural health and nutrition is available at terrytalksnutrition.com. I have rarely met an individual who has Mr. Lemeron's depth of information when it comes to natural products and improving health. And so I think you're in for a real experience today to listen uh, about how cancer is something that we don't have to consider our destiny. So welcome, Terry. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you, Cheryl. That was very nice of you, and uh, thank you for everyone joining us today. Hello and welcome. Why am I doing this webinar today? I am an entrepreneur. I am not a doctor. I do not have any medical degrees. I'm not a cancer researcher. I'm not a scientist. I'm kind of like just you and everyone else out there, fighting to keep our health, wanting to prevent disease, and praying and hoping that we never have cancer or any other disease. I do a lot of research because I've been in the business for a very long period of time, and I consider my career a career of making myself healthier. I have my own personal agenda, which I try to improve every day to be healthier. And anyone who wants to listen to me, I try to improve their health as well. I have friends all over the world that are a family of scientists that I know personally, and I learn from them. What I know today I've learned from them is not because I have degrees and I am so intelligent and I do all this research and I'm a doctor and I can, I can show you the theories of cancer, but I've learned from scientists all over the world, and I believe once you learn something and you think it's really life-changing, I think it's important to share that with others. So really, I am here just to let you know that maybe if I can change just one person listening today to realize that our health is not in the hands of a physician or any other professional. Now, they're all wonderful people, doctors, nurses, chiropractors, any profession out there can assist us in a variety of ways to improve our health, but they're not responsible for our health. In fact, doctors treat disease, they don't improve health. And in order for us to be disease-free, we have to improve our health. And we're going to learn, and as I've learned from scientists, that 98%, that's almost 100%, of all disease is caused by our lifestyle choices, by what we do every day by the food we eat, by the exercise level that we choose to do every day or at least several times weekly, by the environment that we live in, we change. Animals, plants, and people change by the environment that they, are, that they have adopted. So we can make changes to improve our health. We can prevent cancer. In fact, I've listened to top cancer researchers tell us that there are no cures for cancer, and we know that. There's been, it's been 50 years now since President Nixon said that we would find a cancer cure in his lifetime. There will never be a cure for cancer, no drug to ever cure cancer, because cancer is a variety of diseases all wrapped into one that can't be controlled by one drug, and that's why sometimes they give you a number of drugs when people have cancer. And the more drugs you give, the more toxic, it is, toxic that those drugs can become. And sometimes the people die from the drugs before they die from cancer. Now, we can prevent cancer. 
we can also maybe reverse cancer with change of lifestyle, with change of diet, with change of our environment. So you and I have a greater responsibility for our health than a doctor or a physician or a chiropractor. So we can't go through life doing everything we feel like doing, not paying attention to what we eat, not paying attention to the amount of sleep we get, not exercising, not doing something to improve our health. And then when we have cancer, when we have heart disease, diabetes, or any other disease, run to a doctor looking for a drug. Now we are bombarded with drug advertising because there is so much greed in the pharmaceutical industry to sell more drugs. They come up with drugs and then they look for a disease to treat. There is no country in the world other than the United States that allows the drug companies to advertise directly to consumers. To, consu to influence consumers to want those drugs and then go to their physician and the physician doesn't want to have the liability of saying no. They don't want to be sued and they don't want to look like they haven't taken care of you so they're more than likely going to give you the drug. So drugs have gone uh, the amount of drugs that we consume in the United States is just astronomical. 60% of all the drugs manufactured worldwide are consumed in America. 80% of all the pain relieving drugs manufactured worldwide are consumed in America. And 85% of all the drugs for kids are consumed in America. When I travel to other countries and I get on the conversation of health and nutrition and, and supplements and, and disease, they just cannot believe that drug companies can advertise directly to consumers. It's a personal choice between consumers and physicians or patients and physicians as to what the doctor should do for the patient, not allow the drug companies to influence the entire population of America to want more drugs. They think drugs are the answer. Drugs are not the answer, but food is your best medicine. So are you destined by your genes? We once thought that genes controlled our health or our disease. Heart disease runs in the family. Diabetes runs in the family. These, these, these diseases do not run in the family. Our lifestyle, our environment, what we choose to do daily, the choices we make runs in our family. So are your genes your destiny? They found out that 98% of our diseases are caused by the environment, by our diet, by our lifestyle choices, and only 2% of our diseases are controlled by our genes. Researchers looked at health records from 55,000 people and sorted them into winners and losers based on how many genes associated for increased risk of heart disease that they possessed. Healthy or unhealthy lifestyles. Modest requirements to be healthy can be overweight, but not obese. Exercise just once a week, don't smoke, meet just half of the American, American Heart Association's recommendations on diet, 3% winners having good genes but making poor choices, double the risk of heart disease, 6% risk on healthy winners, and 11% risk losers, and 6% risk healthy losers. Even more bad genes making more healthy choices actually cut the risk of heart disease by 50%. Okay. <clears throat> so what makes this, what causes this? That the normal cell then becomes a cancer cell. Now all disease, and including cancer, 
one of the most feared forms of diseases. It tears families apart. And what we have in order to treat cancer has not worked. We have not improved cancer treatments in 50 years. 90 to 95 percent of all cancers are associated with environmental and lifestyle choices. Food. Actually, smoking causes about 30 percent of all cancers. Diet, the food that we choose to eat daily, causes somewhere between 35 and 40 percent of all cancers. That means we're eating something that we should not, and we're not eating something that we should to make, to make us healthier. And then we have all the environmental factors, the preservatives, the drugs. Yes, drugs cause cancer. Many drugs cause cancer. Even just what we look at as simple drugs, like statin drugs, to lower cholesterol, 30 million people are now taking statin drugs for a disease that does not exist. And in the guise that it's going to prevent heart disease and strokes, which it does not, no, no studies have ever proven that statin drugs work, but statin drugs have been proven to increase breast cancer by 15 times. Drugs cause diseases. Drugs cause cancer. Drugs cause death. And then we have all the chemicals, the pollution, even the sodium, fluor the sodium fluoride and, and chlorine in water, city tap water, causes cancer. So we are subject to all these influences that we do have some control over. We don't have control over everything, but we have to have control over what we can. Okay. Causes of DNA damage leading to cancer cell formation. First of all, smoking, 30%. Obesity, we have never seen such an increase of obesity as we have here in America, and now getting around the world. Why? Well, very simply and very quickly, because we don't have time to go into the subject, but we were influenced in the 1950s that fat was bad for us. No studies ever proved that fat was bad for us, good fats, I'm talking about good fats, not synthetic, not like margarine, not like these synthetic shortenings, not like some of these soybean oils and corn oils and all these other oils that have been processed harshly and can cause disease in themselves, but good fats, cream, butter, whole milk, eggs, you know, eggs are one of the best foods in the world, and they damaged they damaged the, the value of these foods by saying that fats were bad for us. No proof, no studies, no evidence, but observational, ob observational uh, cases where they said, I think fats would be bad for us. So we switched from fats to carbohydrates and sugar, and actually both carbohydrates and sugar feeds cancer cells like Gas feeds the car. It fuels it, stimulates it. So obesity today is out of control. Physical inactivity, toxins and pollution, radiation, and lack of sleep. I'll throw that in there too because we know that sleep regenerates our body and rejuvenates us, recharges our batteries, and some people just try to burn the candle at both ends. And stress, another one I'll throw in there. And the all, lack of sleep, stress, carbohydrates, sugar, smoking, obesity, physical inactivity, causes inflammation, causes free radical damage, oxidative damage, oxidative stress, damaging the normal cells. If we lived a perfect life perfect diet, perfect environment, we may reach 120. But aging is a process that is influenced by our choices. 
I have friends that are in their 80s, and they golf when they can. They feel fantastic. They look a picture of health. They look 20 years younger, but they take care of themselves. They make sure they do the things that they know will be healthy for them. But then we have other people that don't care what they do. They don't care what they eat. They smoke. They drink alcohol in excess. They do a lot of things that are harmful to their body, which damages the cell. So we can slow the aging process. We can slow all the diseases processes. So inflammation and free radical damage, oxidative stress, damages the normal cell. And then forming a cancer cell. We form cancer cells all the time. Although we have an immune system and a body that controls the ratio, so we have healthy cells and less cancer cells, and they're not out of control. But with a compromised immune system and not changing our lifestyle leads to cancer. Effective prevention of cancer. Absolutely lifestyle choices. Choosing the right diet. And personally, if you are fighting cancer today, or if you think that cancer runs in your family, change your choices. The best diet that I would recommend is called the ketogenic diet. It's important to improve the level of protein that we have in our daily choices, and healthy fats, healthy fats, coconut oil, olive oil, cream, whole milk, butter, eggs, meat fats, all these good fats that we have been deprived of because of the bad studies or lack of studies. So the ketogenic diet reduces drastically carbohydrates and sugar, enhancing the body's own cancer-stopping system. The diet helps tremendously. And if you want to adopt the ketogenic diet, I would recommend you go to the website, ketogenicdietresource.com. Ellen Davis has developed that website, and it's helped lots of people. I recommend that site all the time. And she's now coming out with a book it's, I saw the first draft of the cover of the book. It will be coming out shortly. But she has an e-book to get you started on the ketogenic diet. She has an e-book on the cancer diet. And there's good research supports the ketogenic diet for cancer patients. Diet makes all the difference. It's the biggest choice you can make. And the greatest problem that we have is obesity. I know a lot of women that are fighting breast cancer, or they've had breast cancer and they're a survivor. And we will have cancer one, two, and three times, sometimes in the same patient. Why? Because nothing has been changed. And cancer cells, when they go into remission, or the patient goes into remission, and the doctor says, we've got it all, those cancer cells that were there in the first bout of cancer leave seeds called stem cells. And these stem cells awaken again. Because once you're a cancer patient, you're always a cancer patient, and you need to change your diet. But women try to avoid estrogen when they have breast cancer or men, but when we are overweight or to the point where we are obese, all those fat cells produce more estrogen. So if you try to avoid estrogen, lose weight. So the cancer risk, number two, is obesity. Insulin and growth factors trigger cell division. Hormonal imbalances, example, estrogen, but where does estrogen come from? comes from plastics, comes from a lot of outside sources, but it comes from being overweight. Trigger cell division in breast and uterine, uh, uterine cancer cells. 
and chronic inflammation. Obesity quadruples the risk of endometrial cancer and increases the risk of breast cancer by up to 60%. Obesity increases the risk of colon cancer by 50%. We are digging our graves with our teeth. We have so much control over our cancer, so much control over our diseases, that we need to make changes. And why do we need to make changes? Because of our children. Because we are teaching our children to follow our same path. That's how we get diseases. Not because it's in the genes, it's in the family. So cancer number three, the risk factor number three, is sugar. Sugar feeds cancer cells like gas feeds our car. Now, nature's sugar, fructose, plus all the good things in fruit, like apples and blueberries and aronia berries and cherries, you have bioflavonoids. You have vitamins and minerals. You have fiber. So when you eat an apple or you eat a pear or you have a bowl of blueberries with real cream, full cream, delicious, what a great dessert. But then when people drink a glass of juice, like orange juice, because you are not eating the orange, you're not eating the apple, you're bypassing eating and drinking. So when you drink a glass of orange juice, you might be drinking up to 13, 14 oranges. You would never eat 13 or 14 oranges because of the fiber you'd be full. So that's about... 8 to 12 teaspoons of sugar. And there's no fiber there to block the uptake of the sugar. And then you have the industrial sugar, the worst sugar in the world, high fructose corn syrup. And the manufacturers know that it's, that's a bad name because consumers are getting wise. You're getting smart. So they're trying to change the name to corn sugar because it sounds better. It sounds more friendly, but they add it to everything. We consume 67 pounds of high fructose corn syrup every year. You and I, I don't, sorry about that, I should have said I. You may, I don't know who's listening, so I'm assuming that you may, you may not have some sugar. If you, do, if you only learn one thing today, just avoid every sugar possible. We consume almost 150 to 250 pounds of sugar per year per individual. In the early 1900s, that was about four to six pounds of sugar. Think of the amount of sugar that we are now consuming today because it's in everything. So between, two, let's say on an average 250 pounds of sugar, I don't eat any sugar, and I think maybe half of you out there don't eat any sugar. So somebody else is eating our sugar, so they may be up to... 300 pounds of sugar, and add on 67 pounds of high fructose corn syrup, 70% of the American diet is refined carbohydrates, which converts to sugar readily, and sugar. We are not getting enough protein to be healthy. We are not, we are not eating the, the right kinds of fats, like margarine. They made margarine a replacement for butter, and how do you make margarine? It's only one molecule away from being plastic. So we need to eliminate sugar because it's a third risk for increasing cancer. Tumors fed fructose grow faster. Mice with breast cancer, control group 8, standard diet, the fructose group 8, standard diet, plus added fructose. Tumors nearly tripled in size in the fructose group by day, by day 20. And you'll see, I, I know, I hear, I hear it all the time. Doctors say, oh, no, diet has nothing to do with cancer. You can eat whatever you want. Eat, eat a lot because you're getting thin. Um, you know, you're losing weight. Eat a lot of ice cream. Eat a lot of junk food. Get fatter. Hey, no. Change your diet. Tumors were of measurable size. By study day, 16. Okay. 
Here's number four, a lack of exercise. Now you say you don't have time. You say you don't know what to do, you can't get outside. This lady here is doing the kettlebell swing. She's using a kettlebell. A kettlebell is like a cannonball with a handle. You can get them from anywhere from a few pounds to as much as 110 pounds. Those are for the big guys. Even if you just did 20 or 30 swings with about a 15 or 20 pound kettlebell, and you can find out how to do a swing by going to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, to the video section, and I have demonstrated how to do the kettlebell swing. Easy to do. It takes you about a minute to do the kettlebell swing. It's better than running. Actually, running is the worst exercise in the world. It does not get you fit. It gets you unhealthy. And if you're unhealthy, you don't want to do, the, you don't want to run. Running is too hard on the joints. And when you lose weight by running, almost 35 to 50% of the weight you lose is muscle. So the more you run and the more you lose weight, actually you become fatter, but you'll be thinner, but you'll have more fat ratio per body weight because you've lost your muscles. And that's why people, when they get older, they can't get out of a chair. They can't get up, up, up a curb. They have to take the step with two feet and then go up the next step with two feet. But when you use weight to exercise and you improve the quality of your muscles, you're not going to make muscles, ladies. You're not going to make big bulging muscles. You're going to get toned and strong and healthy, and men as well. And if you do that for one minute, then you rest for two minutes, and that's one cycle. And you do about five or six cycles, so actually you've exercised six minutes. It may take you 15 to 20 minutes because you're resting in between because you have to catch your breath, but you're only exercising six minutes. And you can do that two, three, four times a day, excuse me, times a week. Now, if you exercise regularly, listen to this, exercise, 26% lower risk of heart, of, excuse me, of lung cancer, 23% lower risk of kidney cancer, 22% lower risk of stomach cancer. You want to know how to stop cancer? 21% lower risk of endometrial cancer. 16% lower risk of colon cancer. 15% lower risk of head and neck cancer. 13% lower risk of rectal cancer. 13% lower risk of bladder cancer. 10% lower risk of breast cancer. Cancer run in the family? Stop it. And you can be the first one to stop it because you're going to change your lifestyle. You're going, to cho you're going to change your diet. You're going to change the food you eat and get better quality of food and the right choices of foods and eliminate or drastically reduce the carbohydrates and the sugar and exercise. You put a package together and you can be healthy at 90 or 95 or you can be de destroyed and unhealthy in your 40s or 50s. Next. Your body's anti-shield cancer shield. Here is, there's a protein in our body, and it's called the tumor suppressor protein, T53. And simply, we don't want to get into too much detail because you won't remember it anyway. I won't remember it anyway. But to the top scientists, here is what we want to do. This P53 binds to damaged DNA, potential cancer cells. Stops cell replication, stops the growth of it, summons the DNA repair team. And if no repair is possible, P53 causes cells to self-destruct apoptosis, which means self-death self or suicide. If DNA is successfully repaired, P53 allows cell division to resume. It's a protein that we want to work with. Okay. P53 is critical against cancer. They are trying to make drugs. But you know, 
It's interesting. I've gone to seminars by some of the top scientists in the world on cancer. Not only on cancer for research, but on research with natural products to see if that is not one of the missing links. And here, if you, if you had a slide up on a wall, and you had all the train tracks in the world on this one slide, and how they crisscross across the world, that's what cancer is. All those railroad tracks would be genes or pathways in the body that influence cancer, the spreading of cancer, and the growth of cancer cells. There's 22,000 genes in our body that influence the increase of cancer or the risk of cancer. A drug, a synthetic drug manufactured by a pharmaceutical company is one molecule that influences one pathway. So it's like, have, it's like being in war, in a war, and you send one soldier to fight in that war. You know it's not going to be, there will be no way to win that war with one soldier. And that's why we have never won the war on cancer, because we're fighting the war with one molecule. But nature has provided food and supplements and herbs that are hundreds and hundreds of molecules and natural substances that influence the health of our body. So, P53 inactivation. What you should remember is P53 P5, P5 is inactivated in almost all cancers. So we want to awaken the P53. In about 50% of cancers, P53 is inactive because of adverse mutations. The cause of P53 inactivation and mutations are complex and highly technical. But viruses and genetic inheritance from parents are two that have been identified, and research on this topic is still going on. There will be lots of research that has to be done before anything can be accomplished. But here we have some ideas that you can prevent cancer, you can reduce drastically the risk of cancer by changing your lifestyle. Okay. So here are two powerful natural P53 activators, grapes and curcumin from turmeric. These are the, two, in fact, these are, these have been researched around the world and shows that in many studies, for example, take grapes, grape seed extract. It's a seeds of grapes that has the highest level of OPCs and resveratrol. When resveratrol is taken in grapes or grape seeds themselves, resveratrol is stronger, more powerful, and more effective than using, than using resveratrol by itself. Nature has so many other nutrients and compounds in the fruit that assist and work synergistically with resveratrol or any other nutrient. Resveratrol was found to be effective because they found it in wine. Now, a bottle of wine, a 750 milliliter of wine, contains one to two milligrams of resveratrol. And people today are selling 500 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams of resveratrol. And you know, in research, they have proven that less is best. Because when you get to a certain point of diminishing returns, the more you take, the less effective it is. It's better when it's in the food itself, in the grapes, in the seed. And curcumin Curcumin now is exploding across the world. In the United States, it's growing at a rate of 30% annually in sales and marketplaces across America, when all other herbs are growing at about 5 to 6 to 7%. Because they found out that curcumin, 
curcumin, and grapeseed treat cancer more effectively than drugs. At the University of Colorado, they have done extensive research on grapeseed extracts, and they have found out in colon cancer, in cancer of the throat and mouth, they have been more effective, it's more effective in stage four cancers than drugs. In stage four cancers, most drugs are no longer useful. And doctors in most cases will say, I'm sorry, you have four to six weeks to live. You have four to six months to live because we, we can't do anything more. It's stage four, it's, it, it, it's not reversible. There's nothing we can do. And when they find that in these stages, grapeseed extract and curcumin is more effective in stage four cancers than any other drug, than any drug. This is a very powerful combination. If you could draw on, if you could draw on Batman and Robin or any other army to protect the city, they would be a dynamic duel. So here, this is a very powerful dynamic duel. The combination of these two is extremely effective in maintaining the pathways in your body that will reduce and lower the risk of cancers. Okay. Curcumin increases P53. That is, that's, that's the holy grail. That's what drug companies are hoping, hoping to find, and to find a way, but they have not at this point. Cancer cells, multiple myeloma, exposed to curcumin. Not turmeric. Turmeric is the plant. It's the root. And when you extract out the curcumin, because curcumin is in that turmeric root at about 2 to 5%, and that's not enough to be a medicine. It's okay to be a good spice. I love the spice. I put it in everything. I put it on top of my eggs when I scramble my eggs or I have uh, eggs eat the ogre. My eggs look orange because I have so much turmeric on it. I put it in soups. I, I marinate my meats with it. I love it. But we don't eat turmeric like they do in countries around the world. And what they have discovered is when they extract out that 2 to 5% out of the root and they concentrate it up to 95%, then, we are getting, then we're getting medicinal results. And even at that point, at curcumin 95%, it's not easily absorbable because it's fat soluble and we can't get it out of the intestinal tract into the bloodstream. So there are various ways to increase absorption of curcumin. But listen, it increases P53 by over 40%. No drug does that. And even right now, Pfizer and Novartis is contacting institutions that are doing research on curcumin to learn more. And they are already trying to come out with a synthetic curcumin. The University of California at Davis has discovered a synthetic curcumin because they want to control the pricing of it. They will never be able to use natural curcumin because it's natural and you can't patent something natural. Now, the same study also found a 50% reduction in cancer cell replication after exposure to curcumin. In fact, in the laboratory, well, I, and I grant you, the laboratory is very easy to get results because you are putting a test substance in direct contact with the cells, so you're working with cells in a Petri dish. So when you put, when you, when you put them together, you take colon cancer cells and you add curcumin. It'll kill all those colon cancer cells in 24 hours. And the same with grapeseed. So these two are the most powerful that we know today in the prevention and the treatment of cancer. Okay. Curcumin. Combined with conventional chemotherapy increases P53 even further. Now, when they took drugs like 5-FU or other types of drugs, Taxol, generic name, and it's used to treat ovarian, breast, lung, and other cancers. When cervical cancer cells are treated with Taxol, P53 increased, but the increase was even greater. 
taking cancer drugs, if you if you are on drugs for cancer, and I'm not here to tell you to go off your cancer drugs. I'm I'm only sharing with you what I've learned, and I feel I have an obligation and responsibility to share with other people if they're interested in listening, that maybe this is just food for thought. That maybe you should change the way you live. Maybe you should change the diet. Maybe you should start exercising, getting better sleep, drinking better water, and taking things such as grapeseed and curcumin. And here's what the biggest proof was. Why do we want to prove that curcumin is better with drugs? Research at the university, excuse me, at Baylor University, they, the 5-FU is a very toxic drug. And, in fact, it has to be monitored very carefully because many people can die from the drug before they die from cancer. But they're looking for toxic. It's like dropping an atomic bomb on the city of New York to rid the rats of the city because the city might be infested with rats, and you want to get rid of the rats. So let's drop an atomic bomb on the city. That will get rid of all the rats, but it gets rid of the city too. So we can't kill cancer cells without getting rid of some of the healthy cells. But maybe we can find a way to work together if you are going to take chemotherapy and if that's your choice. How can we minimize the damage? So curcumin was tested with 5-FU and it, re and it prevented the toxicity or lowered the toxicity, protected the immune system, protected the liver, and they could get by with using less of the drug to be as effective. So you see here where you have the combination of the control, which it did very, very little, and then you have the drug combination, and you have the drug combination with curcumin. So I know many doctors will tell you because they believe that, well, first of all, they don't know what curcumin can do. They're afraid of natural products. They're afraid to say, oh, yeah, I let my patient take curcumin, but the patient died. Now they don't know if they died from the curcumin or from the drug or whatever. And they just want to avoid any controversy. But from all the doctors that are treating alternatively, they allow their patients to take curcumin. And maybe you want to talk to your doctor about if you're on, if you're on drugs, that maybe you should take it too. And you can find there are great scientists around the world, Dr. Ajay Goyal, G-O-E-L, at Baylor University, has talked to many doctors and shared his information on the research to let the patient, let the doctor know how easy it is and how important it might be to include curcumin with, with, with chemotherapy. All right. Curcumin helps P53 stop drug-resistant cancer cells. This chart shows that cancer drugs alone had little effect against drug-resistant cells. Combining the drug with curcumin reversed, listen, reversed resistance because cancer cells are somewhat like bacteria. They're not the same. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that they build up a resistance to the war that we create. When we, use, when we overuse antibiotics, the bugs, the bacteria build up a resistance. They want to survive. And then they mutate. They change into something else. And that's why we have superbugs that we no longer have any antibiotics that can kill the superbugs. So antibiotics don't work as well as they used to work because we have overused them and we're getting them from other sources other than prescriptions. They're in milk, they're in our, in our food. So we're getting antibiotics places that we should not be getting. And so the bugs build up resistance and cancer cells do the same thing. They want to survive, they fight. They build up a resistance. But when you use curcumin with the drug, led to 99% increase in cancer cell death. Okay. Grapeseed, which is another P53 enhancer. 
So that's why this combination is so powerful. They synergistically work like you put one and one together, now you've got ten. Not two, you got ten. Grapeseed increases P53 levels and helps activate P53 against cancer cells. This study also found that cancer cell death increased 78% with the addition of grapeseed extract. What a powerful, powerful combination. And it's available. These compounds are available. They're not drugs, they're foods. They're dietary food supplements. Now here's an animal model on skin cancer. Adding grapeseed extract nearly triples. No drug does this. Triples the P53 level. So it's a powerful increase due to the grapeseed extract. Now when you bind, combine them together, it just skyrockets and benefits for you. Okay. So here's new research on OPCs from grapeseed. Both high and low doses of OPCs, these are the compounds that are commonly found. They are proanthocyanins and anthocyanins that are found in grapeseed. They're compounds, they're bioflavonoids, they're polyphenols that are part of our food. Grapeseed is food. If you ate grapes that had seeds in them, you should eat them. But now they're trying to grow grapes without seeds, or they are. You can find them everywhere. They try to change everything just so it's more convenient for the shopper. Grapeseed nearly stopped tumor development. The study found that grapeseed act, acted through a pathway that triggers cancer cell proliferation. This is a, a, a pathway called HIPPO-YAP. And this research was done at Baylor University with French grapeseed. French is the best. Uh, unfortunately, so much grapeseed extract in the United States comes from China. And it's a very, very poor grade of grapeseed. Because the OPCs are different molecular sizes, different weights. The very small molecular components, the very low weights are absorbable systemically. It gets in the bloodstream, circulates to the cellular level. The very large molecules, also known as OPCs, can, you cannot absorb, and they're called condensed tannins. Tannins are fine when you drink tea or wine because it gives body and flavor and taste, but we can't absorb them. So they have no biological value. They have no way to be absorbed systemically. And you can sell a grapeseed extract that contains 100% OPCs from condensed tannins and still call it grapeseed extract and still say there's 100% OPCs or 99% OPCs, but it does nothing for you. So the French grapeseed extract has removed all the condensed tannins, filtered them out, so you have much higher levels of the very small, low-weight OPCs, which can be absorbed systemically. And this study found that grapeseed acted through a pathway that triggers cancer cell proliferation. But cancer cells don't always go away. They will leave other cancer cells in its place, and also it will leave seeds. And that's why people have cancer two or three times. The cancer is gone. The doctor will give you a clean bill of health. Go on your way, do what you want. Oh, you can eat whatever you want. Don't worry about it, your cancer is gone. Two years later, you have cancer. Because those cancer cells that were there originally left seeds known as stem cells. Now, this hippo, yep, is a brand new breakthrough in cancer research. Oh, there's, there's a lot of work to do to make, you know, a lot of studies that need to be done yet. But a study is going to be presented, published in the next month or two that will show how this works and how many drug companies are looking into the HIPPO-YAP because it kills all the cells, 
stem cells, including. But right now, the only thing that has ever been proven to kill the stem cells is the French grapeseed extract. So the tumor formation reduced to almost zero in the French grapeseed extract group. Okay. Now, oh my gosh. You know, a, a, a drug is one molecule and affects one pathway. And when you have thousands of pathways in the body, that's why we have had no results because cancer is many diseases. Grapeseed and curcumin can do what drugs cannot do, literally, truly, in research. Here are all the pathways that are affected by a combination of grapeseed and curcumin. And cancer drugs have only one molecule target, one pathway, because it's only one molecule. And this is a require, requirement of the FDA, because these are synthetic drugs that are manufactured by drug companies when they, when they develop a drug. That molecule has never been on the face of the earth until it was concocted in some laboratory by a group of scientists with good intentions. But in order to prove that that molecule will not kill everybody, and they have to prove that it has somewhat effectiveness, which takes about 10 years and probably at a cost of $1.8 billion, and then you come up with a drug that now they can patent and they can charge whatever they want, but it only treats one pathway. Curcumin and grapeseed have hundreds and hundreds of molecules and that can treat cancer more effectively. They do what drugs cannot do. Okay. Grapeseed and curcumin, clinical cancer research. In addition to the effects on P53 activity, curcumin and grapeseed have been shown to reduce cancer-related inflammation, stop precancerous lesions from regressing to cancer, protect normal cells from damage by toxic chemotherapy drugs. And human clinical trials include breast, prostate, pancreatic cancer, colon, and liver cancers. There's, there's a lot of good research on these two components. There's probably over 15,000 studies with these two components on a variety of diseases. I don't think any disease could not be improved dramatically by using grapeseed and curcumin. You could have a huge impact on any condition that you're struggling with. Okay. So up and coming cancer research. This is some very interesting research as well. There have been some recent studies done on propolis. Propolis is a compound made through a process of the bees collecting plant bioflavonoids from buds, shrubs, trees, and a variety of plant life. The bees collect this material from plants to sterilize their hive to make sure that no virus, no bacteria, no fungus, no contaminant can enter their hive because if that would happen, it would kill off the colony of bees, B-E-E-S, bees. So this material is called propolis. It's not made by the bees. They use it, and they mix it with beeswax and their saliva to make it into a glue to sterilize the cracks and the crevices of the hives to protect the hive from damage. And then we could collect the beekeepers collect the propolis. But propolis is about 55% beeswax and about 35% resin. So you only have about 10 to 20% really absorbable propolis because you can't digest beeswax and the resin. So you want to make sure that you get a purified propolis without any beeswax or any resin. 
Now, the compound is referred to as CAPE, C-A-P-E. CAPE suppresses cancer cell growth. Breast cancer cells. Researchers compared CAPE alone, extracted from propolis, versus propolis standardized for CAPE content, and as the result, after 72 hours of exposure, isolated CAPE reduced the number of breast cells, breast cancer cells, by about 80%, while propolis standardized to CAPE killed 100% of the cancer cells. Some of the, some of the research I've run across is actually propolis is as effective as curcumin in treating cancer. So I know there are, the researchers are just starting to ramp up their research on propolis, but I think you're going to see in the next several years a lot of research coming out on the effect of propolis in cancer. Okay. <clears throat> now, picking your propolis. Well, make sure that it is purified. Make sure that all the wax has been removed, all the resin removed, and all the bee impurities has been removed. So propolis clinical studies use a purified propolis, which yields a more powerful concentrated extract. And usually 100 to 200 milligrams daily and also, you can also apply it in a cream. There are propolis creams that can be applied for herpes, for like cold sores and fever blisters, and even genital herpes. In some research on propolis and acyclovir, acyclovir is a drug by Pfizer and by Glasgow to treat genital herpes. And just an 0.5% purified propolis outperformed a 5% concentration of acyclovir, much more effective. So it can be used for bacteria, viral, and fungal infections. It's a multi-antimicrobial. It kills all the pathogens. And apply it topically as a cream for cold sores, fever blisters, and even genital herpes, and shingles. Shingles is also a viral infection. It works extremely well for killing off the, the infection. Okay, now conclusion. How many people actually do change their lifestyle? 17% of Americans smoke, don't need to. And we know that it, kill, it, it, it increases the risk of cancers and it causes 30% of all cancers. Why do we smoke? There's nothing healthy about smoking. 23% of Americans are lazy, sedentary, but it's lazy. They don't do anything. They actually sit in chairs and ask somebody to get them, have them get the remote control because they don't want to get up and get the remote control to turn the TV station, to turn the channel. No exercise. 69% of Americans are overweight or obese. No need for it. Causes all kinds of diseases. Do you know that every pound of weight puts five pounds of stress on your knees. Hip replacements and knee replacements are getting to be more common. It's the lifestyle. There's no reason for having a knee replacement or hip replacement. But overweight people, one pound of extra weight you carry puts five pounds of stress on your joints, especially the knees. 90% of Americans get less than the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables daily. Pizza, the number one dinner in America. French fries, Coke. Where do we see any fruits and vegetables in most people's lives? And kids as well. And you know, kids, only 5% to 10% of kids are eating five servings of fruits and vegetables daily, and they will be the new adults. So each generation will be eating less and less, and that's why our cancer rates have gone up more and more over the generations, because our diets, our lifestyle choices are unhealthy, and that's what's driving all the diseases. Okay.
making an elastic, lasting change. Well, you can go to my website. You can subscribe to my newsletter. A newsletter will go out to you every Friday. You can listen to my radio show every Saturday and Sunday, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. But you can listen live. If you're outside of our local listening area, you can listen live by going to terrytalksnutrition.com to the radio show section and listen live because we live stream it to our website. And we have archived all of our radio shows. We have archived all of our newsletters. So you can read for a long time. You can listen for a long time. And you get the advantage of having the audio and the slide presentation at the same time. It's really a great way to take in the program. You can go to YouTube. You can go. You can follow me on Facebook. Um, we're everywhere. So like us on Facebook. Go to YouTube. And uh, you can listen to all of our radio shows and, and our webinars um, on the YouTube section. Okay. And remember, you can go there for more diet and more exercise and learn how to do the kettlebell. My two favorite exercises for people, I don't – running is out of the question. No, no reason for running ever again. If you want to walk, fine. But the best walking – now, I don't know where you are and where you live, so uh, sometimes you may look at like you're silly. But the two best exercises in the world to give, to give you the best – bang for your money, which are game changers, is the kettlebell. It works 400 muscles. And that's why you build muscles, build muscle strength, build muscle ligaments and tendons. You get stronger and have more strength. You lose weight. So you have cardio built into gaining muscle. You're not going to have big bulging muscles, so don't worry about it, even though you use a weight. And the other thing is what is called the farmer's walk. People that sit in a machine and push it with weights attached to it work a couple of muscles at a time. But when you walk, like farmers walk, a farmer's walk because a farmer always carried something in their chores, either milk cans or some heavy object, so they can be, car they can be called farmer's walk or loaded carry. You pick up a rock, pick up a stone, pick up a bag of wheat, pick up two uh, heavy objects in your hands, maybe dumbbells in each hand, and walk for 50 feet. And rest and walk back for 50 feet. Now you are putting strain and stress on all of your muscles to rebuild them and make them healthier. When you walk with a heavy object, you are mimicking functional activities. When you bend over to get... Uh, your groceries out of the trunk of your car, and your muscles are not weak, are not strong. You put strain on your back. You lean over to get something out of the back seat, and all of a sudden you got a back, bad back. Because we have weak muscles, and if you're obese, all that abdominal weight is pulling on your back, and that's why people have low back problems. So we want to strengthen our muscles. And if you want any more information on loaded carries and the kettlebell, go to the website. Uh, it's actually, just Google Dan John, D-A-N-J-O-H-N, Dan John, a man with two first names. Uh, he's an uh, athlete. He's a trainer. He's a coach. Uh, but he actually proves that just little things in everybody's daily life can make a big difference. So this is a good website to go to in order to learn more about. And you can go anywhere on the website and Google kettlebells. It, also, I have it on my website. So get stronger. Get out and do some exercise. Don't run. Eat better. Follow the ketogenic diet. Stop smoking. Get more sleep. You need eight to nine hours of sleep. And if you can't sleep well, there are some good natural products to help you sleep better. So with that, I'll go on to questions.
Terry, thank you so much for all this information, and thank you for providing all these resources. We do have a few questions if you have time. Um, the first one wants to know how we can find products that contain some of the unusual ingredients that you describe with the unique specifications. And so I think probably, in, unless you have a better idea, I would think just contact Terry Talks Nutrition. Uh, send a question in. There's a place right there they can send it, and we'll be glad to help them find someplace close to them where they can find these products. What do you think? That too, or otherwise go to um, health food stores or or uh -huh. other other stores and look for a grape, the French. You make sure it says French. You want the French grapeseed extract because 85% mm -hmm. of all the grapeseed extract in America is Chinese. So you want the mm -hmm. French grapeseed. Uh, look for a very, very good source of curcumin. Uh, the mm -hmm. one that's most highly studied curcumin that I recommend because of the, of the research behind it is curcumin BCM95. Yeah, so look for BCM95 curcumin. Isn't that the most clinically studied enhanced absorption curcumin in the world? Yeah, there is, I think it's up to or over 30 clinical studies, human clinical studies on, on wow. curcumin. It's the best studied curcumin in the marketplace, the best absorbed form of curcumin and one that retains blood retention times up to 8 to 12 hours. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Any other questions, folks? Well, we have a couple of thank yous in here, Terry. Thank you for all of the amazing information, and thank you for all you do to promote information on the correct use of natural products. So we have a lot of really nice comments. Any other questions, folks? Oh, here's one. Are these products, uh, these dietary supplements, safe for use in children? Absolutely. Uh, there's nothing in the product that would be harmful to children. Uh, as long as you can find a way for the child to either swallow a capsule or a tablet or maybe dump it into their food, um, any way you want to take it, there are, there are it, they're foods. There's no toxicity. There's no side effects. There's nothing to be concerned about it. Uh, any age would be um, highly, uh, highly effective and without any known toxicity. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a question. Uh, you know that you talked a lot about avoiding sugar, but what are your thoughts on having an ounce of dark chocolate that has some sugar in it daily? Well, you know, you get really healthy. good, good dark chocolate, which is our very high content of chocolate, like 85 to even 100 percent, which has less and less sugar. So try to get at least over 70 percent, but um, the higher you go, the less sugar you have, but uh, keep it in a small Yes, I love chocolate. I have it almost every day, but it's only just a small square. You certainly don't need a chocolate bar, but a small square is fine as it's giving you additional. But remember, chocolate, because it also tastes good, but it, uh, it pales in comparison to grapeseed extract and its ORAC mm -hmm. value. It's about 40,000 ORAC value. Grapeseed extract and curcumin are 1.5 million to 2 million. So you're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times more health benefits from these two supplements than you would from chocolate. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's another question that's just come in. Since grapes are not always available year-round, do you re recommend taking resveratrol or grapeseed extract daily? Well, if you take grapeseed extract daily, you're getting resveratrol in the grapeseed. It's part of the grape. So you don't have mm -hmm. to use them separately. Grapeseed extract contains both. Um, but I'd be very careful about grapes unless you get organic grapes because grapes are one of the most sprayed with chemicals than any other fruit. Strawberries is number one. I think grapes is number two or three. Mm -hmm. So I would not eat grapes unless they were organic. Uh, I would take grapeseed extract every day and also curcumin every day as a more preventative measure. Mm -hmm. uh, what dose they're asking for grapeseed extract? What would be an, for someone who's already healthy and just looking more for prevention, what would be a good daily dose for grapeseed extract, the French grapeseed extract? Uh, if you want to use it as prevention for the grapeseed extract, French grapeseed extract, about 150 milligrams daily would be a very good dosage. Mm -hmm. And if you use the two together, if you have, if you find the combination of curcumin and French grapeseed extract together, then I would use about 250 milligrams daily. Here's a question that the person knows that you prefer paleo, but what are your thoughts on the Mediterranean diet? Um, the Mediterranean diet is good uh, because they've added many good, healthy components, and we can do the same thing. Uh, nuts, walnuts, um, almonds, 
any form of nut, except the peanut because it's not a nut, but all kinds of, of nuts are very, very nutritious and can reduce a number of diseases, at least reduce the risk of those diseases, uh, substantially, significantly. So an ounce or two of nuts every day is fantastic, and they eat nuts all the time on the Mediterranean diet. Olive oil is, is another component of the Mediterranean diet, which they consume in very high quantities. Lots of fruits and vegetables, which that's why the Mediterranean diet is healthy, because they're eating the right types of foods to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, here's one, another one that just came in, and you talked today about curcumin, grapeseed extract, and a little bit on propolis. Uh, propolis. Are they safe if a person is on a blood thinner? Um, they do not. They do not thin the blood. They do prevent clotting in a different form of mechanism of action, but they don't thin the blood. But always, because I don't know who I'm talking to, so the best thing to do is always talk to your doctor about that. Excellent. Um, here's a question about uh, helping the joints with collagen. Do you have an opinion on using collagen to help joint function? Well, yeah, collagen is one of those substances that can help uh, joint structure and function. But we using grapeseed extract and curcumin and a little bit maybe a little extra boswellia, which is another herb from India. Uh, I don't I don't use collagen. I don't have an ache or pain in my body. I don't have any knee problems. I don't have any hip problems. I don't have any joint problems. Um, I think if you find, I, I, I personally believe more in curcumin and grapeseed for joint structure and function than I do collagen. Excellent. All right. All right, Terry, I think we got through our long list. Uh, just double checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. Well, thank you so much again, and folks, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to learn more about natural interventions to help prevent cancer or to help people who may already have this disease. And again, to reiterate what Terry already informed you, if you would like to sign up for a free weekly newsletter on natural health interventions or listen to recordings of past seminars or links to past webinars or even to ask Terry your questions directly, please visit us at terrytalksnutrition.com. We are very scrupulous with your email. We do not sell them. We do not share them. So if you share your email with us to get uh, these uh, updates on natural medicine information, we will not bombard you with a lot of spam. Uh, The webinars are also on the YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, if you prefer to watch that way, uh, search on Terry Talks Nutrition. We have our own channel, and you can browse through a variety of experts speaking on topics in natural medicine. So, well, thank you again, Terry. I hope that we can do this again sometime soon. Thank you again, everybody, for your kind attention. And until we meet again, good health to you. Bye-bye.